Hello. Today I'm going to review, demonstrate, slash uh, show you how to install the Revelate Designs Ranger frame bag, which I believe is the medium size and fits like so into my Surly long, long Haul Trucker medium size. Size, I mean not medium size, size 52. Let's see, make sure this is aligned well still. And so this is what it looks like essentially filled up. Say this isn't fully tightly packed like you might end up doing on trip, but it's a good approximation of what it's going to look like diameter wise and size wise. You've got everything in there. And just to give you a perspective of what I fit in here. Here's just a scarf, about yay size, and a full couch blanket type of thing. I could have uh, pulled together a bunch of stuff to show you exactly what you would put in here or how I would put in things, but that would be a lot more work and uh, I talk about it in other videos anyway, so you're good anyway. Um, <clears throat> For packing this, I would say you put your um, sort of heaviest stuff, or well, not well heavier and less frequently used stuff down here at the bottom. So the way that this bag is set up, there are two side zippers here on your right hand side. Say one goes to the lower half, one to the upper half. You can separate these two parts into separate compartments because there's this flap, Velcro flap right here you can hear me uh, interacting with. So I'm going to try to show you just how you close this guy up. And so you have a nice secure platform space between the two sections that you can assemble. Actually, works a little bit better on the bike, but in any case, now I've got a platform between the two, so I can keep different things separated if I want to keep tools up here and food down here, or vice versa. Um, up here, you can notice these Velcro straps for attaching something like a bike pump, maybe, or uh, you know, tent tent poles, variety of different things. As long as they're long enough to fit with it, short enough to fit within this space. You've got a lot of options. On this other side is a very handy little pocket that's much thinner in size and very much limited in what its capacity can be, especially if you've got the whole rest of this filled out. But there's yellow uh, pockets within this that you can put smaller items in, stuff that you want to keep track of. I like putting my maps in here personally because it's just some place where I know where they're always going to be. And you'll figure out what you end up liking in here as well over time based on what your organizational uh, setup ends up being. <clears throat> I personally, when I did trip with this um, to, <clears throat> well, trips with this to Pittsburgh and back and um, on the Western Express bike route doing um, sort of a speed run. Well, try to ride fast out there. Just trying to get this aligned a little bit better. Um, trying to do a fast ride out there. Just so everybody can see her. This lady. She likes the bike. Um, trying to do a fast ride out there. I had this whole compartment open all the way through. I personally think that's a lot better way for her to run. Um, from my experience. You may like the compartmentalization. You've got it as an option. And I think it's a good option to be able to have if you uh, have a need for it. <clears throat> so, with, and as far as moisture repellency and um, durability goes, I've had this for, I believe, several years. At least two. Well, at least a year and a half now. And you can tell it's still going pretty strong. You can tell there's a little bit of, you know, rumble, tumble, wear and tear. A little bit of fraying, but that's uh, 
not a poor reflection on the bag, I'd say. And the material is a X pack, which is <clears throat> not waterproof, but definitely water resistant. These zippers are also water resistant and have these uh, sort of protective channel covers over the top, well, at least for the bottom one. The uh, end of the zipper has a little protective cover for it. And on both sides. And the uh, strapping system on this is actually set up when you first get it to be pretty generous in how wide of a, uh, a range it'll accept. So you will probably end up having so much strap left over that you just decide to, um, you know, move, just decide to, sorry, trying to get this aligned a little bit better for you guys. There we go. That should be about right. <clears throat> that you should uh, decide to, once you've gotten it installed the first time, or the first couple times, then you can uh, cut down the lengths of these so that you don't have a lot of excess hanging around. Oh, and because I've noticed it on... Um, actually, I didn't have to do it on this. I was going to tell you that you have to trim the tags, but I really fixed it on this model. Because um, they rub against my legs. <clears throat> the little sharp pointy end. So when I install this, I generally always start with this middle flap right here, just because it provides a nice little stable base to get off of. And you might have to do it again after you've gotten everything sort of squared. And then from there, you sort of focus on these top couple straps, because they're really sort of where, where uh, things are most important about. And up here, what's also nice, is depending on your cabling system and your routing you can just run everything directly over the top you don't have to worry about compressing anything there's no sort of awkwardness about it it's just run over the top Oops. got the wrong side of that one <clears throat> that so these are velcro hook and loop kind of straps this one's both sides can be used in the same way, so this is backed with Velcro loops, yes, and the underside is hooks, and it's ditto for the other strap. This side not doesn't have that same feature, and this doesn't have the same feature either. <clears throat> These are essentially nylon uh, straps instead of like PVC type nylon, and they run through these buckles over here that have locking channels which are nice for making sure that everything stays nice and stable and you just run this through and over and through the uh, little guide rubber bands you have to get placed in the right spot and this and this guide rubber band is actually a, a useful thing to make sure you use because otherwise you have a lot of excess tail just hanging around and then you just tighten this up, cinch the, uh, this, the buckle down, and just run the uh, rubber band a bit. <clears throat> it's also good to make sure you don't snip these down until after you've strapped this down and had it been filled at the same time. Because the uh, level of tightness that you can strap this down is different when it's filled up versus when it's emptied like what I've got right here. This is a bit easier for showing for you guys, a little bit easier to manhandle. And also make sure that I remember to tell you about that little factoid. Because once you, it's the whole uh, measure twice, cut once kind of principle. Once you cut these, you are not coming back from that. So this is Velcro again down here. The middle piece that I just did was another uh, PVC type nylon. <clears throat> so, from experience with this system on off-road trails, nothing like wild single track or anything, but, you know, stuff that's jostling everything good for, you know, hundreds of miles, um, this, this, this stuff holds things steady and in place, and I appreciate it. I think it's good. Oop. And, as you might have just seen there, 
Make sure you don't route over the tops of cables. That's a good way to make this really not turn out well for you. So don't route over the top front of your brake cable. Okay, I tighten that buckle. And this is actually a, a strap that for some reason I just keep forgetting to uh, whittle down. I guess because I, my legs don't run into it and part of me always feels like on stuff like this like I don't need to cut it down maybe I shouldn't so that's another PVC strap this is velcro this is velcro these are the bottom two straps for securing on the underneath here so on these you have to make sure to route underneath your, your cabling instead of over the top because if you do it over the top you're gonna have a bad time Because, yeah, I got it on the other side. Because you're going to end up running the cabling underneath it again and again, and you're shifting and braking, respectively, depending on which cables you've gone over, are going to suffer. <clears throat> and that's also going to damage the crap out of these straps, because they're not made for fabric to metal interactions with repeated rubbing like that. So, <clears throat> just got to be careful on that. These two straps on the bottom are also uh, both, they're reversible, so you can hook and loop on whichever strap you want being the top or the bottom. And now it's on here, I'm going to show you again what the spacing is like. And if you're sitting there, if you're riding along, you're just going, oh, I don't really... I don't really like this layout this way. You just separate the velcro, push it down. And once you push the uh, strapping, like the, the velcro sort of strap down, it gets it out of the way. And this stuff generally does not interact with each other anymore. And the lends itself to being uh, pretty good. And actually, if you're going to be really in line with how this wants to sort of get out of the way so when you've got this these both undone the velcro strap on this side will want to go upward with the hooks facing against the x-pack fab fabric on the inside and the loops want to face inward right here against the x-pack fabric on the inside of that side as well um, there we go. <clears throat> and now that this is on here, you can see the uh, general level of ease of being able to zip the button and close, which is nice. It's going to be tighter when you've got it packed up. And if you're using this and you're using a bike packing setup, you'll inevitably end up packing it up fully because you'll just go, no, but I need these Cheetos to make it to the next town, please. If it fits. Or whatever. Um, I need to be able to make room out of my backpack so that I can shove Cheetos in there. Um, and the little thin pocket that I was talking about over here opens and closes the same way. And you can tell, it's like, it sticks a little bit towards the end. But that's also helped by actually having something in here. There's a, oh, as you can tell, this side works just fine. So it's been a lot of dust, a lot of sun and sand on this, but it's still running well, still working well. And I can put this onto this bike, or for anybody who's sort of doing more of a road racy kind of mindset, I've put that exact frame bag onto that bike. Fits it just the exact same way as it does on this one, which is, I'd say, a good vote for it. Um, uh, so on the Revel 8 Designs page, you can look up what the uh, <clears throat> dimensions are for these different Ranger frame bags. And you can measure your own frame or look up the manufacturer's specs, which is what I did for this because they're going to be better than what I measure anyway. And uh, actually know what you can fit size-wise. And when you order, you can pick out what you need that way. That's what I did. Um, since I didn't have a uh, frame that was pre-manufacturer chosen for, or a bag that was pre-chosen for matching a particular model of my manufacturer's bike. So... 
like with the troll and ogre and some of those things. Um, but yeah, I'd say this is a good bag. Like, if you've got stuff in here that you really, really need to make sure is going to be waterproof, um, just put in another Ziploc bag. But in general, you can get rained on pretty well and stuff's going to come through dry. Maybe if it's been really heavy raining, maybe just a touch damp. But I have had, I had a lot of stuff in here out in the West and monsoon season and didn't get, didn't really notice any kind of real water problem on the inside. I'd say that's a pretty good vote. So hope this has been useful for you guys. Um, if you like what you see, please watch some of my other videos, subscribe, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.